What's up guys, I'm CJ and I am back for another video. So today I thought it'd be a great time because I'm in a very pissy mood to do a anti-haul. So this will be my third anti-haul. I will link the other two anti-hauls that I have done in the description bar down below or in the cards or wherever. Now you're probably asking, well CJ, why are you in a pissy mood? Well let me just show you. I literally was not going to film today because I feel so self-conscious about my face right now. I have been telling you guys about my little battle with the ingrown hairs and it's it's really, like, it's really bad. And this is super real, I mean super real, real with you right now. It's like, uh, my skin looks so bad right now. And it's all right here. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, well, it's probably hormonal acne. Trust me, I, if I could zoom in close enough, there are literally hairs in there. Now it's a two-part issue. One, the hairs are creating like little cystic acne underneath because they're deep in. The hair is deep in. And I know it's a hair because I am like a terrible, terrible picker. Like I, I cannot help myself. I pick my arms. I pick my legs. I don't know if it's a mental issue. If I just, I can't take it. I can't take the hairs in my skin, I can't take the bumps in my skin, I have to do it. So I've literally taken needles and I've dug into my skin, which no, it's not great, don't do it, I don't recommend it. But I've literally taken needles and dug into my skin and there are these hairs and they're growing literally sideways. I don't really know what to do at this point in time. If you guys have any suggestions, I'm totally open to it. I like, I've shaved, different shavers, different razors, different things, whatever. They're not working. Obviously, you guys know my exfoliating routine. I have umpteen bajillion different acids, and at this point, I have tried and used multiple different ones. I've used retinols. That's partially why my face was red in the video I did a couple videos ago. I am trying to deal with this, and I could put makeup on, but it's not... I still feel like shit about it. So, super real right now. This is what my skin looks like. It's all here. These are hairs. This is just a breakup, so that is what it is. But I have all of these. These are all, literally, you can see it. These are all hairs that I've either picked or they're red, inflamed, pissed off little hairs that are in there that I can't get to. So, I, I wasn't going to film. I actually was just about on the verge of tears and was not going to do this, but here I am. So if you have a shitty comment to say, go for it. It is what it is. If you have any ideas or anything to help, please, by all means, I am open to any suggestions. So now that I got that little sappy sad story over, let's get actually into the anti-haul. So, of course, like I said in the last two videos, if you like any of the brands that I mentioned, if you like any of the products that I mentioned, I am not coming after you. I am not trying to offend you. I'm not trying to degrade anybody. These are just my opinions on products that I like or dislike. That's what my whole channel is. Products I like, my opinions on them, and opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. So the first product, I have my computer right here. I am ready. The first one is the Glam Glow. Now you know I couldn't do an anti-haul video without a Glam Glow product, right? The first one is the Glam Glow Glitter Peel Off Mask. Literally, you guys, a glitter peel off mask. Now, there are few peel off masks that I like. Do they really do anything though, is the question. I don't know. I think maybe the History of Wu One did a little bit, or History of Who, whatever the fuck it's called, did a little bit of something, but. Is that just my brain telling me it is, or is it really working? I don't really know if peel-off masks do anything. So we're going with the peel-off mask. Those are iffy in general. Now, we're gonna go ahead and throw glitter in it. Now, I know I'm not a dermatologist or a chemist, but last, last time I checked, I just don't know the nutritional benefits or the dermatological benefits of glitter. Um, Oh wait, no, that's right, duh, silly me. There fucking isn't any, okay? There's, glitter does nothing for the skin. I am so sick of Glam Glow putting cosmetic ingredients in, into these masks and then trying to sell them like they're a powerhouse miracle product that is truly going to change your skin. If you want to sell gimmicky bullshit, that's fine. Sell it yourself in Claire's, sell it for $6, and you can have fun with it. It is what it is. For 6 bucks, for $5, it's still awful, but I, I wouldn't be so offended. But the fact that these masks are $80, $69, $70, whatever they are, it's just 
beyond comprehension. Now what can glitter do for your skin besides nothing? It can cut and scrape your skin. It's literally little glass or metal or whatever. I don't know what they make their, their glitter out of, but if it gets in your eye, it's going to cause serious issues. It could cut your eye. It can tear your skin if you're massaging the glitter into your skin. Glitter is not an ingredient that needs to be in skincare. Now cosmetic ingredients have a certain place in a certain time. If it's an eye cream, like an optical illuminating eye cream, a little bit of mica is going to give you the appearance of having some radiance and it's going to give you more of a cosmetic effect rather than a skin benefiting effect. That's fine. There's a time and a place for that. Glitter does not have a time or a place in skincare. It is an Instagram trend. They've gotten away with all of this and I'm so sick of it. They need to be held accountable and people need to stop buying their products. So there. There you go, you guys. That's how I'm feeling today. So you're going to get some pretty heated feelings. So the next one I don't feel so angry about. So number two, product number two, is the Peter Thomas Roth C... I think it's called the Peter Thomas Roth Potent C Serum, I think. I'll put it right here. It's their brand new serum. So I actually don't have a problem with this product. The reason I'm anti-hauling it is because it uses 20%, I believe, of the newer type of vitamin C that we're seeing pop up in different skincare brands. It's the Tetrahexyl Decal Ascorbate. I'll go ahead and put the name right here. If that ingredient sounds familiar, that is because that's the main star ingredient, the whole thing that the Truth Treatment Systems is based around. Now, those are medical grade products. They are very big investments. The Transdermal C Serum is $199 for one fluid ounce, but it uses, I believe, 80 to 85% of the Tetrahexyl Decal Ascorbate. So the reason I'm anti-hauling this product is because it uses 20% of the Tetrahexyl Decal Ascorbate. I believe there is 2% or 1% of ferulic acid as well as vitamin E. So you are getting nice antioxidants. The problem is the product retails for $95 for one ounce. So that's a pretty hefty hat price tag, and I know what you're thinking. In comparison to the Truth Treatment product, it's hat price. The problem for me is you're getting 20% of the vitamin C ingredient, whereas in the Truth Treatment products, you're getting 85% of the tetrahexadecal ascorbate, or even in the Balm, you're getting a 70 to 75% of that ingredient. So while you are paying double the price for the Truth Treatment products, you're getting upwards of four times the amount of that vitamin C ingredient. If you're really trying to get a star ingredient, if you're going for the most active, if you're trying to get a product that's going to do the most, I'm going to spend a little bit extra money and get four times the amount of that vitamin C ingredient to get the most bang for my buck. Also, from experience, I know the Truth Treatment products are going to last quite a long time. That C Serum is going on month number two now, and I've used barely any of it. So even though I'm spending $199, it's going to last six, seven, eight, nine months, if not a year. Whereas the Peter Thomas Roth product, I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to use or how fast I'm going to go through it. But if I go through a bottle in less than six months, it's going to end up being more expensive because I'm going to have to buy two bottles or three bottles or four bottles in a year, which will come out to $200, $300, $400 versus one vitamin C serum. I hope that makes sense. I know it's kind of a weird rambly thing. It might be a very nice product, and I think that this new vitamin C has a lot of potential, but it's just like if you're comparing ingredients and potency, I'm going to pay a little more for something I know that's going to do more. The third product that I'm going to anti-haul is actually one that a lot of people really love. This might be me just going back to my like super headstrong stubborn Polish roots. Like I always say to you guys, when I see a popular product, I'm like, no. Nah. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just because I'm not excited by it, but I'm anti-hauling the Clarence Double Serum. Now I've looked through the ingredients. I don't find any of the ingredients particularly offensive. There are some decent ingredients and then there are some just average ingredients. I know a lot of people really seem to love it. I know it's supposed to give you a beautiful glow and a lot of people say that it's kind of like their go-to serum when they just need to get something done. For me, looking through the ingredients, so there's just nothing that's like makes me want to pay that much money for a serum. If I want to pay a lot of money for a serum, I have to want to use it or I have to be excited by the product. And when I look at this clearance double serum, there's just nothing about it that makes me want to buy it. Now that's just me personally. I know a lot of people have success with it. So like I said, opinions are like assholes. 
That's mine. Next is the Tom Ford, let me get the name, the Tom Ford Intensive Infusion Facial Oil. Now this is one ounce of oil for upwards of $250. Now, I just want to say this right off the bat, Tom Ford, you need to stay in your lane. Skincare is not your territory. And I'm not here to say who can and who cannot make skincare. That is, that's you. But I think you should stick with like suits and clothing. Great clothing designer. Really love your stuff. Makeup, you make great makeup. But skincare, I'm gonna go ahead and just say that's not your cup of tea, per se. I looked through the ingredients, they're like, Okie dokie, you know, it's kind of just like, yeah, you have ingredients, not very exciting ingredients. There are some ones that are a little bit different, but when you look at the bulk of the product, that's where the issue comes, comes into play. Now the bottle is beautiful, but I'm going to go ahead and post the ingredients here as well. You'll see that the bulk of the ingredient is capric triglyceride, which is just fractionated coconut oil. You'll see that in a lot of different moisturizers, but in an oil product, in an expensive oil product, I don't want to see that as one of the first ingredients, and I really don't want to see it as an ingredient anyways. It's going to give the skin and the oil a nice feel, and it will provide some moisture, but it's not an expensive ingredient. Then we go to squalene, which is also not an expensive ingredient. Next ingredient, we go to evening primrose oil. It can be a little more pricey, but it's not an expensive ingredient. We have jojoba seed oil, coconut oil. You see that the majority of this product is just not an expensive ingredient, and when you go through the whole ingredient deck, there's both not anything that's super exciting. It's not really a true oil if you really look through the ingredients. In my terms of a true oil, it's, it's just purely oil. This is not a true oil product. Maybe this product would interest me if it was at a $50 price range, $70 price range, something that was a little bit more attainable, but $250 plus dollars for something that is mostly just cheap ingredient that you could find in the drugstore, that's a little bit of an issue for me. And then when I look at Tom Ford's range as a whole, of course it's luxury, of course it's expensive, but there is really no right for it to be expensive besides the Tom Ford name. So for that reason, I'm going to anti-haul the Infusion Active intensive oil, whatever, really Tom Ford's brand as a whole, but this product specifically. The next thing I want to anti-haul is the Biore baking soda products. This is another one that makes me just want to be like, pound my head against the a concrete wall as hard as I can until I just forget about this. Please, for the love of God, people, do not use baking soda on your face. Our skin has this thing called an acid mantle. Our skin runs at about a pH of 5.6, around 5.6, it fluctuates slightly up, slightly down. But our skin is slightly acidic. We need it to be slightly acidic. It helps our skin to protect itself from the environment. It is a good thing. Baking soda is a alkaline ingredient. Applying baking soda or baking soda-based products to your face is going to do, is going to neutralize your skin's pH, and is going to bring it more towards a neutral to alkaline side of things. That's bad. When you start to throw off your skin's pH, your acid mantle goes to shit, your skin's barrier is compromised, and you are inviting a whole host of issues to happen on your skin. Whether it's acne, whether your skin experiences a significant more amount of transepidermal water loss, you're gonna open the door for the Pandora's box of skin issues. There's a reason why your skin is slightly acidic, and there's a reason why there's all these barrier repair products that are helping to rebuild that barrier. Using baking soda ingredients, baking soda products, is going to be detrimental for your skin's health, and it's not going to help you in the long run. It might feel squeaky clean, it might really feel like you're deep cleansing your skin, but trust me, for the love of God, people, please do not use baking soda products on your face. That uh, little rant actually lasted a lot longer, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off there. I have some other ones that I was going to try to get to, but we are, I can't seem to get my videos under 20 minutes right now, so I'm going to try to cut it off there and edit this a little bit shorter. What products are you anti-hauling? Did I mention anything you like? Anything you use? Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what products you're anti-hauling, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!